Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today I'm going to cover a very simple and inexpensive way to fix a hole in your wall. I had fur downs right here that I pulled out and I patched up this little part right here. I'm not concerned with floating this part out because when I build my cabinets on top of these like I did on the other side of my kitchen, they will be above this uh, line anyway and no one will see it. But I'm going to pop some holes in it and I'll float it out just to show you how it's done. So we'll take right here, knock a decent little hole in there. Now, if I had a larger hole, we could fix that too. There's not much to it. So I'm going to have a larger hole over here, okay? And over here, I'll just pop a small hole. I have a stud here, so I know I'll miss it. All right, simple fixes. Let's get on it. What you're going to need is a piece of drywall. You can find scrap pieces of drywall just about anywhere. If you go drive around and you look in a new construction area, you can pick up all kinds of scrap pieces. If not, you can go to your local hardware store and they sell two by two pieces, two feet by two feet, half inch thick or three eighths, it doesn't matter. If you have a three eighths piece, you can patch a half inch uh, hole in the wall with this type of patch. You're not gonna be able to do it other ways. You'd have to have the exact match. But with this type of patch, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use a hole saw for this. This is a bimetal hole saw. You don't necessarily need a really good one like this. You can get a very inexpensive one at your local hardware store or you can get a, a whole kit at Harbor Freight for probably $15, $16. Um, and that will go from three quarter inch all the way up to four and a half or maybe even five inches. This right here is a four and a half inch uh, hole saw. What I'm gonna do is take my drywall, flip it upside down. I'm bringing it in a couple of inches. That's all I need to do right there. It puts a hole in the center part, but you don't have to worry about that hole. That fills up real easily. What I'll do is score it all the way across the first time. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you can flip your piece over and take this piece right here and hit it. And if you cut it from the back side, all you're doing is cutting the paper and it pops off. Now, I have my circle here, and I have a lip that can go all the way around. What I'm going to do is take my razor blade and just put some score marks on it. You're just going to cut the paper. You don't have to go deep. Right from the ridge, right from the cut, on out. Because this is a circle and not a square, you need to do this in order to break it. Now this can break real easily. I'll just push it around, and I'll take my first piece and peel it off. Take these, I can break it here and pull them off little sections at a time. If it tears any of the paper on the outside of it, no big deal. You've got plenty of paper there to work with. So I'll pull these off. Now I have what you call a butterfly patch. I'll clean this part up just a little bit right here because you want to make sure that all the drywall on this part is off so it sits flush. Not a big deal. It's easy to clean off. This piece right here will break off. All right. This is going to go right into a hole and I'm going to show you how to make it perfect. If you wanted to trim this round, you can with scissors just take and clean it up some. Okay, if I go inside and I try to put this in a hole on my drywall, I'm not going to have a pilot right here, a pilot hole for it to start off on and it's going to want to jump around. What I'll do is get a little bitty piece of wood and you can keep this with your, your plugs. You can make a whole pile of plugs, different sizes if you want. It doesn't cost anything once you have this. And what you're going to do is drill a hole in this. This will be my template. So, I'll take my saw and just drill a hole right here, close to the end. Now that I have my hole, I can go on my wall, set this where I want it to, and put this in here and get a nice clean hole without it jumping around. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a larger one because I am gonna need 
two sizes. I put two different holes in there. This is a pretty big hole saw to be using with this little drill, but I love this little drill, so I use it a lot. There you go. Now we have two templates. On here, we're going to do the same thing. Flip it over, and I'm going to put a hole right on the edge here. Like I said, I don't want to tear the paper on the other side. Same thing. You want to cut this at least an inch and a half to two inches away to leave yourself paper room. In case anything tears, you can trim it. So if you want to go two and a half inches, that's fine. But I usually go an inch and a half to two inches. I'm just eyeballing it on here because that's all I need to do. I'll take this and cut it. We're going to trim this up a little bit. I don't need that much. All right, now that we have this, we do the same thing. The good thing about this too is when you take this bit and you make that cut on the other part of the wall, you're going to lose the thickness of this. So that gives it room to slide in there. The thickness of the blade is going to make a little bit larger hole when you go to do it from the outside. So this slips right in easily. You're going to use regular drywall mud for this. Now, when you mix your mud, which you have to do, you never just take it out of the bucket and put it on the wall because you're going to have little bubbles in there. And they're going to pop and you're going to have air bubbles, little, little bitty pits all over. So what you want to do is whip it up. If you don't have a cake mixer or anything like that that you can use to do this with, you can just take it and scoot it back and forth on your pan and that will soften it up and make it creamy. And that's what you want. You want to get all that air out of it and make it creamy. Just like that. I'll take my pattern, set right on the center of that hole. And like I said, that pilot is not going to have anything to grab to. That's why you make this template. So you start off a little bit on the outside of it. And that's it. You just get your drill running and then you just hit it. Now we can put our plug in there and you can see how that goes. Here's our plug. This hole is slightly larger than the plug. So it fits right in just like that. Now, if you don't want to make a template like this, if you don't have a little piece of wood, you can always take that extra piece of scrap um, drywall that you have and put a hole in that and make your template out of that. So we'll go ahead and drill this hole. Switch the tips real quick. We'll set the drywall right up on the center of that hole. And this is a much larger uh, hole saw, so it's going to want to grab. That's why you want to get a little bit of a spin on it before you touch it in there. So we'll get it in the hole. Once it starts, it's easy street. There you go. This one's ready for this plug. This is what I love about butterfly patches. You can take 3 8 inch, half inch, or even 3 quarter inch drywall and fill a plug in here on your wall. This is half inch right here, but if I had 3 8 I could fill it with a half inch or 3 quarter and vice versa. The reason is you're making a butterfly patch. It's not touching anything behind it. I don't have to put a piece of wood or anything behind this. This is going to hold it. And what makes it strong is the fact that you're putting mud all in here. And I'm going to show you in one second. We fill that up with mud. And then when we push this in, it fills just about all of that gap. And then when you flow it over it, it's strong. So let's go ahead and take some mud and put in there. All right, what I'll do is make sure I cover all these edges. It can look sloppy. It can be a big blob. It does not matter. You don't have to be a pro at that. Now, once you get all of that filled, you want to take and skim around the edges. So let's go ahead, 
skim the whole thing, and you can put it kind of thick. I'm not worried about going thick with it because I am going to dampen up my plug and it's going to make this stuff ooze out. All right. I take a damp rag and I wet this all around. Once this is wet, it's going to help push the mud out that's on the edges here so I can float it. So I'll put it right in that hole and all of that's going to bond together when it dries. We'll take this, I hold one end while I feather outward and it gets it really tight. And by wetting this it allows it to stick tight on the wall and suction on there and it pushes out the excess mud. If you don't dampen it, you have to be a little more careful about pushing the mud out because it can mound underneath there and you'll have a big patch or, or a larger lump right here that you have to float out. So you see how easy this is when you wet it? You see how tight it is on the wall? Now when I go back to put my skim coat on there, I have to put minimal mud on there. It's going to be easy to patch. Take my mud, make sure I don't have any trash in it. If you pick up any trash from this wall, you don't want it to get in this mud because it'll leave a track. Now I can just take, skim right over this. And I'm going to put a light skim over it, and then we'll feather it out some. You can use a six inch knife for this whole thing, but when I feather over things, I like to use a larger knife because it's going to bring it out. It is going to make your job easier. The wider this knife for the area that you have to work with. I, I can't get a knife that's too big because some places you may not have the room. But if you have a, a wider knife, it definitely makes it easier. So I'll just... And I can let this sit, lightly hit the edges, and this will be ready to go. When you sand it, you want to lightly sand it. Don't push it and make grooves. You want to just barely rub on here. This is 100 grit sandpaper. Now, if you need to knock something down heavy, yeah, you can rub it. But your final part, you've got to really go over it lightly. You don't want to, you don't want to go heavy on your final part because you will leave grooves in it. All right. I'm using a paint and primer all in one. It's by Valspar. And uh, I wipe this down with a little bit of a damp, damp towel, anything you want like that. You just want to make sure you don't have dust all over. I'm using a heavy nap roller with this. And I'll just roll it right on. And you'll see, I'll get some close ups in a few minutes. And You can't even tell where it was patched. I'm gonna go from I'm gonna go from here all the way over past the patch so you can get an idea of how it looked. Now you see how easy it is to make your own patches. And it's a lot cheaper than buying those, those little kits. Don't waste your time on that. Make your own patches. You can keep a bunch of them in your garage. If you want, put them in a little container and when you need to use them, you've got them. Before I go, I just wanted to especially thank all the people in the military who have served this country proudly. Thank you all. Happy 4th of July. I'll see you on the next project. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you find this useful, hit like for me.